everybody, it's Isabel, your encourager helping you conquer challenges. And today we're going to talk about conquering the challenge of dissatisfaction by having a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness. I got my tea ready and I just wanted to have um, a reminiscing, contemplative, thinking about all the good things that God did at the end of 2020 to curb that dissatisfied spirit and just, um, yeah, just think about all the good that God's done and be thankful about those things. 2021 has been going so way too fast. January just flew by, February flew by, and um, you know, I'm so goal focused and thinking about the future, but I don't wanna breeze past all the good things that God did right at the end of 2020. He did some super amazing things for me. And it was a, it was like a, it was like a gift uh, right at the end of going through all the trials of 2020, and and so I think to um, not be disappointed and not being impatient, thinking about oh, like being impatient, wanting all the good things that God's going to do in the future because I'm so glory oriented. I want to combat that by keeping a spirit of thankfulness and keeping in the forefront of my mind what God has already done for me. And I think that also can help keep a spirit of hope as you're going into the new year. So I just wanted to have a video to look back on and say, wow, God did that for me. That was so sweet. So that's basically what this video is about. I'm just chillaxing, I got my tea, and I just wanted to reminisce a little bit. So this story is a time um, about where, a time that I took a faith trip and I went to Florida, I went to Jesus 2020, it was a conference in Florida right at the end of the year, and I got picked up by strangers, spent the day with strangers, and um, got unleashed in evangelism. So stay tuned, this is a really wild story. As I was writing it, I was like, gosh, and then he did this, and then this happened, and then wait a minute, that happened too. So stay tuned for that. But first, also, I want to um, introduce myself well to you. So like I said, my name is Isabel. I'm a nursing student. I'm also a mom. I'm also a writer and a model. And I love Jesus. And I'm passionate about people reaching their full potential um, by being self-confident. And I think that comes through hearing the voice of God and conquering challenges that can be as simple as decluttering the room to combating mental challenges like anxiety and PTSD. I have a few videos up here where I talk about the challenges and the trauma that I went through and how I conquered anxiety and depression, not alone, but with help through Jesus Christ. And so if you are someone that wants to grow and you wanna grow in confidence and you wanna grow so that you can be able to conquer your challenges and then accomplish your dreams, then please stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and this is a place where you can find encouragement. So, that's me, so let me get into this story now. But a bunch of special things happened to me on this trip, and it did happen to me, but this is not just for me. If God did these things for me, then he can also do them for you. So I wanna share this of like, this is not a bragging thing, and I'm not exclusive. God is no respecter of persons. He loves us uniquely and specially, but also personally. And so it's not just for me, it's for you too. So just be listening and thinking. And if you ever have a thought like, God, I wish you would do that for me, just ask him. And he probably will. <laughs> so to start off the scene, 2020 was a really difficult year, right? For me, 2020 was especially hard because nursing school had moved all online. And it was extremely overwhelming for me. Nursing school almost killed me last year, mentally, physically, emotionally. More on that later. I'll probably make a video about that later. But it was extremely difficult to just sum it up. Um, and I had a lot of dreams and ambitions, but I put that all on the side. And I was trying to hold on to my nursing school grade for dear life. All of my focus became trying to pass nursing school and pass medical surgical. That's the class I was taking. And so um, all of my prayer, all of my devotion and my time was focused on really a worry of, am I gonna be able to pass this class? Am I gonna be able to become a nurse? And so I was really holding on to God's promises and he was faithful and he helped me and I passed those classes. I actually got a B in every single class and I thought I was gonna get straight S. 
And so that went really well. But at the end, I didn't really have a whole lot to tangibly hold on to um, to celebrate. I had passed my class, but it was kind of like, duh, Isabel, you're going to pass the class. Like, you have a calling from God. Why are you so worried? And so I had worked, worked, worked so hard. And it was just kind of a bit anticlimactic. It didn't feel like there was a whole lot to celebrate in 2020. I felt like I kind of just spent a little too much time consumed with worry. And so I was happy to pass, but I wish I had some more happy memories to look back on on that year. About mid-year, God was talking to me about conferences. And conferences have been something that I've gone to most of my young adult life. And they've always been something I can look back on and see, wow, God did some really special things. He really spoke really clear to me. And it really was very pivotal in the direction of my life because I got such saturated direction from God at those conferences that it like propelled me to move forward into whatever he was telling me to do. Um, but he was showing me, Isabel, you haven't gone to a conference in a while. You should really invest in that. So I kept that in my mind of, hmm, maybe I'll go to a conference later on this year. Um, and then COVID happened. And then nursing school and I was so consumed with all these studying. But I heard about Jesus 2020 and I wondered if I'd be able to go. I had went a couple years ago and it was so amazing. It, it set me on fire. I was preaching in the airport terminal and it was just, it was a really, uh, it was a really marking time for me. Um, and so randomly one time I was worshiping God and I heard him tell me, blessing me and exhorting me to go to Jesus 2020. He was like, you need to go to this. I wanna bless you, I'm gonna bless you there. And all the things that you want to do well, like being a mother and all these other things, you need this conference to be able to do those things. Basically, that he wanted to fill me up there so that I could go out and do those other things. And so I was like, wow, thank you, God, for like giving me permission, blessing me to go and giving me this. And I was not even like praying dedicatedly at that time. I was just worshiping and I heard him speak to me. Um, but it didn't seem super wise to go. And so I, um, you know, in the midst of COVID and things like that. And so, but I f knew in my heart that God was telling me to go. And I was like, I want to, whatever he says, I want to be all up in that. And so he, um, I, I asked some wise counsel and they also had a witness with the Holy Spirit. And so I felt totally released to go. Also, I had this vision. I had an image in my mind of one of my friends um, coming to the conference with me. Um, and so I, I had all these plans and I was like, hmm, maybe I should get her ticket and maybe I should bring her. And in the end, we had about four total girls from my church that we were deciding to book a room together and go to the conference together. It was a one day event. And, um, and so we would all fly to Florida and this, that, and the other. But then I got so busy with my exams and everything that I booked the flight and I got my friend's flight ticket, but I didn't get the main event tickets. I didn't get tickets to Jesus Conference and they sold out. I was extremely stressed. More than stressed, I was really frustrated with myself that I didn't get these tickets. And also I was trying to get a ticket for my friend and I failed. So I was really embarrassed. Um, and I had to get like extra seating. It was like, you know, there's the main event and then there's like a side event with a TV screen. It's like the side lawn. And that was disappointing. I didn't want to go all the way to Florida to go to a side lawn event. Um, you know, that's just not what I had envisioned. And so um, I was just believing and praying and I was like, God, you told me to go to this thing. So I believe that there's a seat for me in the main lawn. Please help me. So, um, so I, I went in faith to this Florida trip in faith that there was a seat for me and my friend because they were separate tickets and they had separate armbands to allow you to go into this main event. So I was like, Lord, I believe you have a ticket for me there. <laughs> okay. So from the beginning, this trip kind of had two main problems. One, we didn't have main tickets and two, we didn't have a ride from the airport to our Airbnb or the grocery store. And me and our group of friends, we kind of split and went to Florida at different times. 
And so we weren't sure if we should go to the Airbnb first or the grocery store first and if we should Uber or take the train ride. And we didn't have time to figure it out. We just had to get on the plane and go. And so when we got there, I didn't even really have time to pray or think um, or worry of like, Lord, sh can you help me get a ride? Because it was going to be really expensive to Uber to all of those places. I didn't even think about it. We just were just going with the flow. <laughs> And so we get off the um, plane, we get on a shuttle, we get off, and uh, my friend tells me, hey, I think that guy's going to 2020, uh, Jesus 2020. I was like, how do you know? And she says, look at his arm, and he had this um, horn around his arm. I think it's called a shofar. And I was like, oh, cool. And he's walking, and he starts to trip over this, like, roll of plastic bags that, you know, that you fill up the trash can with. And I started to bend down to pick it up for him because I thought it was his and fell out of his luggage. And I was like, sir, is this yours? And he's turning around looking at me. He's like, no, it's not mine. And then from there, we started conversing and I asked him, hey, are you going to Jesus 20? He was like, yeah, how do you know? And he introduced us to his wife. And um, through that, we just naturally said, yeah, we're going. We're trying to find a ride. We don't have a ride to wherever we're going next. And already kind of knowing that the Lord already organically set up that this divine encounter with these people of God, that, and they were so generous, and they were like, well, we're going to pick up our rental car right now. Come with us. And we got to meet them, and they just were newlyweds and um, hear about their love story, which is super special. And so that was super cool. Right away, the Lord was just lining up an adventure for us in this new state, and it was already super fun. So this couple was super cool and they were like asking the Holy Spirit, what should we do next, this and that and the other. And they generously take us to the grocery store. We pick up some groceries for the next day. And then right now it's getting a little cold and it's a little late. And we go to Airbnb, but the key's not working. We're punching in the numbers to get into the Airbnb. It's not working. We don't have a number to call. Our friends aren't in town yet. And so we're like, but what do we do? How do we get to our, how do we get into our Airbnb? And then this couple, they were like, well, we're about to go eat dinner. You guys can come with us. And so then they take us to dinner and um, we eat in the restaurant with them. And this is when it, it, it got really special because I got some really special prophecies from them. And it was funny because I had my hair up in this scarf and it because I was on the airplane and there were germs and so I didn't want those germs on my hair so I was wearing this like African not African but it, this looked like this really royal um scarf and I never wear my hair up like that I never wear a head wrap um but everyone was staring at me and it felt like everyone was just like noticing me because I was I guess I really stood out with this hair wrap and um and just different prophecies that I had were just really, um, like, just one, um, the man, he said that he saw me spinning in the spirit, that the Holy Spirit was spinning me like a spinning top. And then that just, um, in the Bible, talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit and just being um, filled with this exuberant joy. And I was just encountering him at the table. <laughs> And I just felt really special and marked and really beautiful that day. I just felt like the Lord kept highlighting me to other people. So it felt special. And, uh, and I wrote about it in my journal and things. And so, um, so that was that night. And we were just fellowshipping with them. And different people from our Houston church were meeting up in Florida. And they joined us for dinner. And they were getting prophesied over. So it was just a Holy Ghost party up in the restaurant. And we just had a really good time. And as we were leaving, there were different people highlighted to me that I started witnessing to and saying, hey, God loves you, you know, this and that. He has a plan for your life. And as a mom, that felt really special for me because I felt like I was unleashed. I was on this trip alone and I felt like the Holy Spirit was like, it's go time. Like he kept highlighting different things to me and I was just like, I was just witnessing. There was no holdbacks whatsoever because it was, it was go time. I was, it was like, a blatant opportunity for me to just walk into that at that point in time without any other concerns or responsibility as a parent. And so that was really, really nice. And so oh, also, so we didn't have a ticket, but they didn't have any tickets at all. And they wanted one ticket for the husband. And I was like, I know a friend who has one main ticket. Um, 
and uh, and so I was able to facilitate him getting that ticket also. <sighs> so that was a really special divine encounter, and it just felt like an adventure, and our like hearts were knit together. Um, so it was a really special. It felt really special to like make this like uh, like super fast friendship with these people. And I know it might seem weird or not special to other people, but when it's the Lord, He just does something in our hearts. Um, and so I, we knew that we were safe. And um, I don't know how else to explain that. There was just a witness in our spirit. And they treated us so well, so thank you so much. And um, so that was the first night, and then we spent the night. And let me see. Okay, so I'm gonna try to finish this up because I don't wanna run out of space. Um, but the next day, uh, we got all dressed up and super cute and just dressed up for the Florida weather. We knew it was going to be hot during the day and cold at night. And we were just really expectant and excited. And as we were in the line waiting to go up to the, the conference like field area, it felt like we were preparing to go meet our lover. Like it felt like it felt like this anticipation, like we were planning to like go on this huge date or something like that. It just felt like God is on that field and we're gonna go meet him. I can't explain, but it was so special and I got to see some friends from Florida. And um but I was also concerned. I was like Lord like I really want to be on that main field. I don't want to be on a side field. How like I'm really praying that he would provide a ticket for me there and we get in the in we go through the ticketing area and they give us a different wristband and we're supposed to go to the side lawn we were not allowed to go into the main lawn and they wouldn't let us in and they were doing really good with like covert precautions and there was only a certain amount of number of people allowed on the main lawn and that's it they did not budge with that and i really respect that and so i'm like i'm sorry we sold out and so you cannot we can only allow a certain number of people in here there's there were no exceptions and so i was super disappointed and i was really disappointed for my friend also and i was trying my best to have a good attitude um but i was just disappointed and we were also split up with our group of friends um from houston and so it was just me and my friend over here we were separated from the main group and um and i was just like man lord like this is not what i thought it was gonna be and so I'm trying to like muster up courage and just I'm trying to like switch gears and accept the fact that we're over here and it'll be okay. And, but I was having a hard time. And I was trying to get over myself. And then two of my other friends, two of the girlfriends come over to the sideline with us. And this is, this is really the main purpose of why I am making this video. My friend, um, she came over and she she takes her wristband, which is a different color because they were on the main lawn. She takes her wristband and she pops it off and she's like, I want you to have this. We're going to switch places with you. And I just started, whew, I just started bawling and weeping because the fact that my friend would sacrifice her spot in the big main event to switch with me that I could have that experience meant so much to me and their new friends like I'm just now feel like I'm finally like building roots again in this church community. And so it was so special. Just bless my heart. I'm just weeping. I'm like on the floor. <laughs> and she gave me her wristband and that was our ticket to get into the main event. And I was just like, here, look at it. Like I didn't give any explanation to the people. It's just like totally undone. And, um, and so God made a way for me to get into the main event with my friend by my side. And they were also able to get, um, to get somebody left and gave them their tickets. And so they were able to also come into the main sanctuary. So everybody was in the main event and nobody was left out. And it was super special. And God spoke some really amazing things. I want to look back. Um, I won't share everything because some of these things feel too holy to share. Um, but it was really, really good. And so let me just recap why this trip was so special. Okay, really quick, this trip was super special to me because I was 
experiencing deep sisterhood friendship. You know when you go on a road trip or such, you get to really um, get to know the girls that you're with. And so that was super special to me, especially as a military brat and going through the trauma that I shared about on this channel before. It's been hard for me to get back out there. And so that was a really special thing for me, especially in the middle of COVID, where it felt like barren land when it came to friendships. I was experiencing it right at the end of the year. Secondly, we got to evangelize as a group, and that was really special. Third, I felt really special. I felt really beautiful when I was on this trip. And then fourthly, as a mother, as a parent, I felt unleashed to go uh, evangelize, which I know you can do with your child, but it felt really like, like I'm saying, I felt like I was unleashed to go and evangelize. That was one of my prayers. And lastly, um, in a year that felt like a famine, God really watered all of my dry places at once. And it felt like a gift and reward um, through coming out of the trial of what 2020 was. And it was really special to me. And also stay tuned. Um, I also went on another trip. I went to Upper Room New Year's party. And it was basically a worship party. And so I'm telling you, God did a lot of things right at the end of 2020 going into the New Year's. So I'm having a lot of time, uh, a lot of fun reminiscing about that. Stay tuned for that. And remember, listen to God's voice today. Let it change your life. And um, please subscribe because I see you. I know you've been watching and coming back. Hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me and it'll show me that you really are being encouraged. And this is a place where you get encouragement, where you can conquer mental challenges, challenges that you physically have in your, in your living space and things like that. And so that you can go out and conquer your dreams. So I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.